Hello guys and welcome back to another Neo2 build guide and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at my Shaman God build which makes use of hatchets, Omnio magic and access to yokai ability spam if you wish to play that way. Now I've been seeing a lot of best endgame animal destruction builds doing the rounds recently and as usual you know how we do here we take the best elements of the various playstyles in order to fit them synergistically into a build that has freedom and flexibility in this case yes we have the boss melting yokai ability spam available to us but the build can also be played exclusively as a hatchets build or a build entirely focused on omnia magic so there's a lot of freedom here and this build is applicable to at least three different types of players or playstyle my personal way to play it is to focus around hatches occasionally using omnio magic for status and when i'm farming bosses then i'll use the omnio magic to supercharge my anima in order to spam my yokai abilities the sets we're using for this build are the spirit of seme which increases our omnio magic power which isn't actually super needed for me but it's perfect if you want to run this as a pure omnio magic focused playstyle but it also has a four piece bonus that reduces the enemy's defense when hit by omnio which we will be doing all the time and a five piece bonus or 15 percent untouched omnio magic which is super needed for my playstyle i'm also running two pieces brilliant stratagem as this inflicts a blind effect on any enemy that is inflicted with the scorch debuff which for us will always be active due to us doing heavy fire damage from both our omnio magic and our hatchets which are imbued with fire as well as heavy burn accumulation on our stats which we will get into later i'm also using the mataza's long spear for the two piece bonus of 90 percent faster movement on enemy killed which is one of my favorite buffs being able to zip around the double movement speed especially when playing a ranged class is both hilarious and extremely powerful we can also maximize our speed buff uptime with a hatchet's ability that allows us to run at a similar speed from the start of the fight but i'll get more into that later i'm also taking warrior of the west bow and earn splitter hatchets for double life increases on their two piece bonuses respectively and we of course need our yasakani magatama accessory in order to activate all of these set pieces as it reduces our set bonus requirements by one per set so looking at the stats on our gear for our hatchets i'm running with imbue fire and burn accumulation this allows us to have burn propped all the time on our enemy as well as the blind effect we're getting from our brilliant Strash them two piece bonus. I also have an attack bonus to magic, which is a stat we're going to be maxing out. Ignore all of my inheritables as I didn't get around to sorting them due to trying to get these builds out as fast as possible. So I'll leave the inheritables to you to decide on what you want, though one thing I would suggest is stacking untouched Omnia Magic wherever you can. On our helm, I'm running key increase, defense, life, and Omnia Magic power. For the chest, untouched Omnia Magic, reduced elemental damage taken, life, and Omnia Magic power. For the gloves, increased attack and defense when using hatchets, Omnio Magic Power, and untouched Omnio Magic. For the waist, Omnio Magic Power, running speed, tenacity, and life. For the boots, defense, Omnio Magic Power, running speed, and dash key consumption. Now, for this accessory, it's important to note that you might want something else here if you're focusing on Omnio Magic, as this build allows you to focus on that playstyle if you wish. Because I'm not entirely focused on Omnio ability damage, I mostly use my Omnio to generate anima for my yokai abilities and also simply applying status. I found it more important to use this accessory that has a fixed stat of anima charge when in critical state. If you were focused on Omnio ability damage, you might want to take a divination board or something with a fixed stat of Omnio magic power. But moving on, on my accessory I have elemental damage increase, reduced elemental damage taken, burn accumulation and untouched omnio magic again make sure you prioritize untouched omnio magic and have this on both your accessories for our yasakani magatama we have the exact same roles as the other accessory for our ranged weapons i'm really not too worried about them until the ultimate end game builds that will happen once all the dlc releases and we're really min maxing for now i just take whatever actually improves my ability when using the ranged weapons themselves rather than using them as a stat stick which is what tends to happen when you're min maxing your actual build so things like movement speed whilst aiming speed up and untouched ammo are actually going to help me when I'm using the weapons. So now let's get into the real meat of the build and look at the spirit guardians and soul cores. This is where our yokai ability spam becomes possible. With our main spirit guardian we have Genbu. This boosts our anima on any ranged hit which is our entire damage form in both ranged hatchets and omyo magic. Stalwart in omyo which lets us poise through any damage with our magic casts. Damage taken reduction, further elemental damage taken reduction, and anima bonus on Omyo magic hit. So already, with just this, anytime we hit an enemy with our Omyo magic, we're massively charging our anima, ready to throw out our big yokai ability. You have a lot of choices for your second guardian spirit. Personally, I'm currently running with Isanagami for increased Omyo magic power, as at the time I was experimenting with a lot of Omyo abilities, but realistically, unless you're running a pure Omyo focused playstyle, you'd probably be better off with something more anima focused, such as the Tengen Kojaku, 
which gives an anima bonus based on elemental attack. You'd of course need to make sure you're hitting the stat requirements of strength and heart to unlock it. Um, Aminomitori is another great spirit as it increases lightning damage and gives an anima charge bonus based on active skill use. I also really like the Kagiwani which adds to the healing you receive on Yokai ability hit though I already receive a lot without this so it feels like overkill to run this when we can take more offensive minded spirits. So for our cores we definitely want Otakimaru. This is the big damage ability that you see melting bosses, raining down all elements which can also apply confusion and then it self synergizes with an animal bonus to confused enemies. It also has life drain on yokai ability hit which is one of the sources of healing I mentioned earlier. Next we have Ryomen Sukuna which again gives an animal bonus to confused enemies synergizing with Otakimaru but the main reason we're running it is the massive animal bonus to Omyo Magic hit rank A. And yes, it does stack with our other sources of anima bonus on Omyo Magic Kit. I was also super lucky to get both an inheritable attack increase and a reduction to attunement cost because this allows us to fit a third soul core of Infernal Oni B, which increases elemental damage and another anima bonus on elemental attack. It also has a cute little item drop rate increase and attack boost. So again, super lucky with my soul cores. You might not be able to run this guy as your third soul core and it won't make or break the build, just fit in anything you can into this third slot. So before we get into the core stats, one thing you're gonna need to do is simply go to the blacksmith, remodel your hatchets to scale with magic. For obvious reasons, we're going to be maximizing our magic stat, and skill is one of the least prioritized stats in this build. So looking at the stats, the first thing I always do is get everything to level 10, then I look at the stat requirements of all of my armor, accessories and spirit guardians, and put points into the stats required to unlock the special effects of said gear. Once that's done, we max out our main stat, which in this case is magic. Now, the next thing I maxed out was constitution, for two reasons, I'm running a spear as my second weapon, and secondly, the life increase is huge and super nice, however, you don't need to do this. The second most important stat after magic would actually be courage, not only is it a hatchet scaling stat and will further increase your hatchet damage, but the key regeneration is probably the most important stat outside of direct damage for ranged hatchets playstyle as you're constantly moving. So magic, courage, and whatever you want in order of personal priority, every other stat you see raised for me is entirely for the sake of gear requirements. So next I'll go over the hatchets before getting into the Omyo skills and the Jutsu. So in terms of skill priority, for the ranged playstyle we want Boulder Breaker and Advancing Storm. Advancing Storm is our most used ability, we use it to both evade and counter throw side to side and it can also be used backwards if you're sprinting. So keep that in mind, you can throw it whilst moving backwards but you have to be at a sprint before you press it otherwise you'll just stop and do a neutral throw. I attach these to low stance which is where I spend most of my time during ranged combat however I do have a setup for close quarter melee which is where I focus on mid stance and for this setup I have death from above which is a melee combo I use alongside tile shaker which is my parry. I also attached improved dragonfly to my mid stance and what I like to do is throw this out to lock an enemy in place and then hit them with a grease lightning which is also attached to my mid stance. So remember boulder breaker on low stance for the ranged play style and grease lightning in mid stance for the close quarter engagements. Now I want to mention my favorite ability on hatchets. It's so good that it's one of the reasons I try to run hatchets as my second weapon on any build that I play and that is all ablaze. I attach this to my high stance and I use it to self buff before any engagement. It increases your attack power and movement speed significantly and you're very very fast. It's basically a free tiger running skull and it works with any weapon meaning you can buff up with this in hatchets and then switch to any other weapon and the buff will remain active. The only cost is a small sacrifice to defense but honestly with this mostly being a ranged playstyle we're not intending to get hit anyway. For our active mystic cart we're using tireless throw which lets our hatchets retain their damage no matter the distance they're thrown from. Um, and now we'll get into the complicated part. I'll try to make it simple by showing you the main omnio skills I run but ultimately you have an infinite amount of freedom here to essentially do what you want. Because this build is running an Omyo armor set and has 99 points in magic, you can run this build any way you want in terms of magic. For me, there are only 4 magic abilities that I use in my playstyle. The 3 offensive abilities I run are Water Shot, Thunder Shot and Explosive Shot, not to be confused with Fire Shot. The Thunder and Water Shots are simply there to both apply status and charge my anima. Remember I said that I focus on anima charging rather than magic damage? Well that's the point of these abilities, they're faster cast, you can carry 7 of them each and each time you land one of these you gain anima. I carry explosive shot over fire shot because the other two are enough to do the anima charging whereas the explosive shot is capable of nice damage and applying instant burn and blind with our set bonus whilst also doing massive anima charge. I experimented with running thunderstorm and geyser shot 
which are the explosive shot equivalents of the lightning and water shots, but they're too slow and limiting to charge your anima efficiently. So it works better to just use these simple shots for lightning and water and stick to fire for your beefy explosive shot. Now the other skill I use is a self buff skill that I apply before any major encounter and this is Arch Yokai Talisman. This further increases our anima generation and it lasts a decent amount of time so essentially for the boss melting cheesy strategy you cast Arch Yokai Talisman, throw out an explosive shot, then two either water or lightning shots this should be enough to apply confusion or have generated enough anima to throw out your yokai ability. Assuming that ability is Otakimaru, then you will be applying confusion and whilst it's raining down, you should already be throwing out another explosive shot and two more either water or lightning shots. And you just repeat this process until the boss is dead, which should be within three yokai abilities. Keep in mind, whenever a boss flips into the dark realm, it purifies itself of any debuffs. So try and keep an eye out for when it's about to do this to save your Omyo spam for a second. Most of the time, the boss will do this after you've depleted its key. So if you see it coming, just wait for him to go into the dark realm first otherwise you're going to be throwing out statuses for nothing. In the shifting tree I highly recommend you pick up leechkin which restores health on yokai ability use as well as special finesse focus which increases the damage of your next yokai ability after successfully performing a burst counter. I also have anima increasing skills such as earth vein and dragon vein. You could also take imperious strike which increases the anima gained by 50% of whatever active skills you have this set to however I think this would be overkill and you're better off saving your active skill buffs for direct damage increases. Speaking of which in the samurai skill tree i have damage boost magic damage boost constitution and back in the shifting tree raging strike and i attach these three damage boosters to most of my active skills on the hatchets also in the samurai tree obviously make sure you have flux too and practice stance fluxing Remember you don't actually need to change stances, just key pulse as usual and slide your finger across the stance buttons to generate the most key. For example, if I am in low stance and I want to stay in low stance, I press R1 to key pulse while simultaneously pressing square as if I'm switching to mid stance but I follow through from square back to the X button staying in low stance. Just practice sliding your thumb from square to X, then practice hitting R1 and square at the same time then sliding your thumb back to X. Essentially you're getting the benefit of fluxing without ever changing your stance. Now the final thing that's probably quite important is your clan house, however for all of the footage in this video and the time spent playing this build I've been using the wrong clan and that's because I wanted to remain in Toto as most of the builds I've been working with are not finished yet and they use heavy armour. That said, the houses I would recommend for this build would be either House Date which returns a portion of the anima spent on yokai abilities for any enemy killed by your yokai ability as well as increased anima charge on melee attacks. The other house is House Kyuki which synergizes great with your water shot as you'll do increased damage to saturate enemies as well as charge your anima faster when throwing out your water shots and that's pretty much the build guys if i forgot something major or if there's simply anything else you'd like to know please feel free to ask in the comments and i'll do my best to reply to you directly we've got more builds on the way so stay tuned for those you can catch me streaming over on twitch and posting regularly on instagram just look up xenoswarm for the relevant platforms links will also be provided in the description if you like this video please hit the thumbs up as that really helps us out and if you're not already subscribed consider doing so for more neo2 content coming soon Okay guys, take care.